Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video is about training of bowmen, archery practice during the medieval times. It's very interesting because you go right the way back to 1252. We have a record, some of the first or earliest records of bowmen should shoot from between the ages of 15 and 60. So they're now telling you you know, that as young as 15, you should shoot. But others said you should start them at seven years of age, which is about the age I started shooting, if you want the truth. But it's interesting. If you come to the time of Edward III, archery was on its way and it was going down. So he passed extra laws. You know, one of the things that they talked about is don't export bows and arrows across to France. They might shoot them back at us. And also he made it made sure that the sheriffs, the Shire Reeves, enforced the practice of archery every Sunday morning and also on public holidays. You must shoot, not playing football, soccer, not gambling, not cockfighting, not doing any of the old sports. You must bend to the bow, whether you be noble or common, because it was a noble thing to do. You see, they believed that if you learned the art of archery, not the sport, the art of archery, it would lead to honour and profit, both for yourself and for the realm. So how did England get its reputation for these incredible bowmen, the English and the Welsh? If you look at the Peasants' Revolt with Richard II as the young lad, he was confronted by hundreds upon hundreds of fully armed bowmen. What Tyler's men? They bent their bows and some arrows were loosed apparently, but the young king stepped up. He knew the value of bowmen. He had his own bodyguard, the Cheshire Bowmen. So, at this time, 1300s, early 1300s, things have got to have been changing. Now they're starting to shoot the bow. Maybe restrictions on hunting had been lifted. It was encouraged from the pulpit. Now, the nobleman, why on earth should a nobleman learn to shoot the bow or learn anything about archery? Well, if he's going to command you in the field, he needs to know everything. And you look at Sir Thomas Erpingham, Battle of Agincourt. He was the commander of the bowmen. He was the guy who rode across those ranks of bowmen. Now strike, now strike. He knew his business. He knew exactly what he was doing. If you go all over England and in some parts of South Wales, just behind the churches, there's often a place called the Butts. The Butts, where the archery target was. You need a place to shoot. If you've got a nice open field like Finsbury, where you can have the mark, you can have a target at each end of the field. Shoot down, shoot back. These things, well, they even passed a law that if you were practicing archery and you accidentally shot another bowman, well, it was bad luck on him. Mind you, if you shot somebody else, you'd be out up for murder. Now, I'm just going to have a little shoot, see if I can knock the feather off the stick. Now, I've decided for this practice shoot for myself to put all of my Wars of the Roses gear on. I've got me jack, me helmet, me splints or jack chains. I've never shot in these. So we'll see how it goes. I'm fully armed. I'm ready to go. I've got some whistling arrows as well, so they'll be a bit of fun. We'll see how they go. They always make a bit of a splash. You know, it's vitally important that the bowmen train, but not just at the butts with the targets at each end and walking up and down, but the competition improves their aim. But also it's vitally important that they shot together because on the battlefield, they are going to be shooting together. So you imagine you're there, you're in your company, you train, you know who's the best shot. You want to be as good as him. So after church, every Sunday, straight down the mark. And if you were a young lad, you might only have two arrows if you're under seven. Then when you're a little bit older, you might have four until you're an adult. You've got a bag full of arrows. You can spend all Sunday morning shooting away.
So copying the, uh, the, the Beauchamp Chronicles, War of the Roses, I'm going to pull the visor down. See if I can shoot still with the visor down. It then off changed the whole aspect of shooting. For a start off, you can't see your arrow. So you pull that down. It's really weird. You just get to see your arrow in your target just for a split second. Personally, I think I'll just keep the, the visor up and just concentrate on getting a bit closer to that feather. I think I scared it then. See, I've mentioned this in some of my other videos. The idea of the wand is it concentrates your aim. So in medieval times, they would often be at the wand. It's a little bit of Robin Hood, but it really does improve your aim. If you can get close to that wand, fast shooting with a heavy bow, you're gonna put one in amongst the enemy easy. Did you get that? <laughs> So that you know, the jack chains, they don't make any difference at all. And these jack chains are perfect as a light piece of armor because anybody who gives you a side swipe across the arms or the shoulders, you're protected. So yeah, I'm all for these jack chains or splints, whatever you want to call them. But now I've got to concentrate on a certain little feather. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video of ours. If you did, like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to support our channel just a little further, you could have a look at our Patreon community. The link is in the description. And before I go, quick shout out to some of our Patreon members. The first one is a fellow bowman, Dave Shepard. Hey Dave, keep shooting. James Turley and John Myers. Hey guys, thanks a million.